go ahead and see if anyone would get on right now. If not, I'll go ahead and start. I really don't have a lot to say off the top of my head. Um, I really want to just go over some of the stuff that was written down. And I've been just praying about this for a while. I've been praying about this for a while. And I have been... uh, I've felt very peaceful in my heart. And this is just something that isn't going to take too long. But I felt the need to just share some of it with you. Uh, Just some words of encouragement and words of wisdom for any of those that are struggling out there with uh, in the workplace, in their homes, in their uh, with their families, with their congregations, with their ministries, with their friends, with their just their environment, wherever they're at. And of course, you know, I always put the music just to have, uh, just to create a different atmosphere, a peaceful atmosphere. So I just want to have this, this music on while I read uh, just what was on my heart as I was praying about this. And I really pray and hope that this will bless you guys. I usually start off the intros by saying hi, but or waiting for some of you guys to get on. I'm just going to have this video saved. And I really want you guys to hear some of the stuff that I'll be saying in here and really pray about it and see if it speaks to you. So, of course, you know, I got to get the music on. So as I was praying about this, and as I was uh, just really getting into the presence of God, it just touched me to know how God gives us all a purpose. One of the main things God does is He calls us to fulfill something, something we were destined for. So this small devotion that I have for you guys, I titled it as Fulfill Your Calling. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'll just go ahead and get right into it. This is something that I'm building up for my son. uh, So later on he can have these words of encouragement for later. But I thought I might as well share it with you guys too. Since the gospel is for everyone. The words of encouragement, the ways of wisdom are for everyone. Now, will everyone accept it? That's the question. But let's get started into it. See if if this gives you guys some peace or assurance before you go to sleep. And I do apologize for being late. Uh, I've been working a little bit bit more than I've uh, worked before. So one soul has a chance to change the environment. And that soul has to change the environment that surrounds them. They have the opportunity, they have the opportunity to restore families, break strongholds, lift the weary, and guide the lost to the path which leads to truth. But only one can accomplish such things with A divine power. This power that can change these things, that can do such things, must be infinite. The source of this power must be everlasting, enduring, loving, full of joy, peaceful, patient, kind, generous, faithful, gentle, and must have self-control. So God calls each person to fulfill an assignment they were destined for. With these fruits, with these qualities, these characteristics. And God, our sweet Lord Jesus, our precious God is the source that provides fruitfulness. No man, and I mean no man, No one can establish an environment of grace without maturing in their spirits. The Bible 
clearly declares that. How can development fit into applying the nine fruits of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22? Well, one can learn under pressure, or one can also learn with the weight that requires strength and, and the will to bear the will to bear such uh, pain and misery. And when that weight is finally lifted off of whether if it's a muscle or whether if it's uh, an arm, a leg, whatever it is, that weight on that body part, no matter if it's flesh or spirit, it remembers the feeling. And the repetitions and the habits, they all create a sense of urgency the next time that weight is felt. So it's one test at a time. And quickly, and I mean quickly, we learn to apply such things as self-control or uh, endurance. Or we learn to apply these things for example, it may be in the workplace or in any other profession because it's ethical. It's something that we must do to act in such a way because it's professional, because it's a higher authority. But when God calls us to do things beyond the workplace, beyond our own profession, he doesn't do it just for our own benefit, but He does it for the sake of His glory, for the sake of His reputation, for His name's sake. And with this, He honors us for winning others with grace. He adores us for diligently seeking His likeness every single day, for obeying Him in, in full, and I mean full, not partially, full obedience and submission. So we must continue to accept the calling upon our own lives. Whether that calling comes from a way of your gift, if it comes in a form of teaching, of singing, of praising, of dancing, of drawing, of any gift that you might have that God has given you uniquely, that calling must be fulfilled with such qualities as the fruits of the Spirit through Him and through Him only. And with every calling comes a purpose that requires a Christ-like character. Some of us may be armor bearers called by God to help out that brother that we, that brother or sister that we so dearly love. Some of us are leaders. Some of us our teachers. Some of us are mothers, fathers, husbands, sons, and some of us may be pastors. We may be youth leaders. We may be, um, we just may be deacons, greeters. But each of us are called, we're called to fulfill a purpose from God that was clearly only destined for us. My calling is not going to be the same as someone else in my life. We there may be similar. It's not entirely going to be the same. It's unique. It's something that God already predestined for my life before I was even in my mother's womb. He already knew it in the same way as he knows yours. And I was getting this off of Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, all the way through 26. We have the, the deeds of the flesh, and yet we also have the fruits of the Spirit. And aside from that devotion I, read, I wrote out, how can one be in self-control? How can one be in a place of love? How can one have uh, fullness of joy and peace on their hearts and in a, a time of distress and pain and misery. Well, because of that pain and misery and distress, we learn to cope through the things of God and through God Himself by His Word. 
we learn to do these things through grace, through our faith in Christ. And because of our faith in Christ, that development, that maturity in our spirits, in our minds, in our souls, we start to develop that self-control. We start to develop and, and to instill peace, not in our own hearts, but also in our environment. And we have that opportunity to change the world, to change our families, our friends, our, our work areas. The Bible clearly says, I talked about this in one of my uh, recent posts. The Bible clearly says, Blessed are the peacemakers in Matthew chapter 5 when Jesus is speaking to the Beatitudes. He says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they're called the sons of God or the children of God. Notice, God is our peace, God is our refuge, God is our tower that we run to in times of distress and pain and misery, in times of difficulty, hardships trials, tribulations. However, the sons of God, the children of God, they're called peacemakers. So why is it that this infinite, that this divine, all-knowing, almighty, powerful, knowing God, why does he call us peacemakers? Wouldn't he be the peacemaker? Or does the Bible clearly says this, the undivided truth, the truth that is absolute. Does this declare that we are peacemakers because God has called us to make peace, to bring peace to this earth? Because a couple of verses after that, it says that we are the salt, we are the light of the world. So that means we're not just only peacemakers. We're not just only the salt and light of the, of the world. We're more beyond than what we can imagine because God has destined us to fulfill that calling. He has destined us to calm the storm. In the middle of the storm now, we have went from God calming the storm to giving us the power to calm the storm, to giving us the word, His truth, to proclaim and declare until it sticks, not in just our memories, but until it sticks in our own hearts. Two commandments He gave us, and they are only fulfilled through Christ. It clearly says in Matthew chapter 5, Christ fulfills the law. It clearly says in the Word of God, two commandments that Jesus gave to us. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, with everything it takes in your vessel, in your spirit, in your mind, in your soul, everything you have, love Him. Love Him dearly. And all of this will come through and all of this will just follow along. And the second one is to love thy neighbor. To love thy neighbor is to love yourself. To love yourself is to love the Lord because your vessel is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, that opportunity to change not just environments, but to change nations, but to change the world, comes by these characteristics. It comes by the fruits of the Spirit that comes from God alone. So fulfilling your calling, what is it? Saying yes. Saying yes to that voice that comes from God. Saying yes to that, that feeling you get when you just know something uh, has to be done. It's the fulfilling of your calling is saying yes to walking into what you knew you were called to do by the talents you have, by the gifts that you have that nobody else has in your life, uh, by the, if you have a, a voice that you know, that you know God adores, if God gave you a voice, you ought to use it for him. If God gave you the ability to, to memorize certain things and to or uh, to lead, or if He gave you the ability to teach, if He gave you the ability to do certain things, if He gave you the ability to even work. Some people are actually called to be armor bearers. Some people are called to be um, to be uh, pastors. Some people are called to be deacons, greeters. Everyone's different. 
But walking into that calling, into that ministry, requires fruitfulness. It requires that patience, that love, that kindness, that peacefulness, that joy, that uh, endurance. What I'm saying is, as you fulfill your calling, you'll get major satisfaction, even if it hurts. It may hurt. It may may feel difficult at times. You may want to cry sometimes because he might feel the weight of all of it. But we all have this saying that God uh, doesn't give us more than what we can handle. So if we can really believe on that, then we should be able to back it up with our actions. And I say this all as words of encouragement. Because one day, we will stand before him and he will ask what we did with that calling, what we did. Uh, what we did with those gifts, what we did with our abilities, with uh, our own lives, what did we do with it? One day we'll stand before Him. So through the hardships, through the difficulties, through the pain, what I'm saying is, as you fear your calling, as God is still working on developing your spirit, just say yes, just obey And it's a promise that he will give that peace, that he will give that uh, fulfillment in your heart. There's nothing, I mean nothing better than that fulfillment that comes from God. Fulfillment has all these things. It has that peace, it has that joy, it has that love. But just some words of encouragement I had uh, for, I just felt this in my heart that many people may be struggling a bit with, you know, I don't know what exactly some people may be struggling with. I don't know. All I know is I felt it in my heart to just talk about that fulfillment that comes from Him alone. And the fulfillment of your calling is not something that adds on to your daily life. It's not something that's added on. It's not a burden that's added on to you raising a child or to you having to go to work. It's not, a, it's not uh, something that's added on. It's something that should be in your life because it's something that comes from God. It's a necessity. We need it. It's like the same thing with food. We, we need that nourishment for our vessels in the same way as we need the things of God. We need God himself and his word. We need the fulfillment of the calling from God. It's a nourishment to our souls. To the depths of our souls, it restores us and it provides us with the motivation, the urgency to keep moving forward. But do we know how to say yes? Or do we know how to obey? Do we know how to listen? Do we have a sensitive spirit? That's a question we might want to ask ourselves. That's all I have to say right now um, but I would hope and pray that any of you that are listening to this would just really ask go ahead and ask God for some wisdom ask him what is my calling what is my purpose whatever you need me to do I'll do it it's that mentality it's that that maturity in our spirits, are we ready to accept it? And if we're not ready to accept it, then what's holding us back? Really think and pray and pray on that. So I'll stop right there. So, as you're thinking about that, don't be afraid, write it down, do whatever you gotta take, make sure it sits in your heart. Make sure it just settles in your spirit. So I hope it touched some of you guys' hearts. I hope it helped a little bit. Um, I know it's going to help somebody. I hope it does. I, I just I have confidence that it will help somebody. But God bless you guys. Uh, love you guys, whoever was watching, whoever will watch. And hope you have a great night. And please pray for me and also... Please pray that I find a barber. Can't tell. My hair is like on steroids or something. I don't know. I need a barber. (laughs) But God bless you guys. Good night.